some storms all morning long. The first batch came in and went out. Nothing severe, so that's good news to hear. And the second round is coming in. And so far, according to the National Weather Service, it looks like things are starting to die down a little bit, despite the storms actually not making this. The second round of storms not making its way into our viewing area just yet. But I'll be tracking it with you now, taking a lot of look in downtown Macon. Get a bit of cloud cover overhead. Temperature is sitting at 64. We've been warm overnight last night. You probably did not have to cut on your heat uh, last night, but you will as we hit into tomorrow, but moving in into the radar, you can see we still got a big batch of rain headed our way. Like I said, we had rain come in early, early this morning, one, two o'clock this morning. I know because I was here and it came in fizzled out and moved eastward. That was the warm sector of the cold front. Now we're coming in with the cold sector. The cooler air is back behind the front. So up against the front, we do have a line of storms making their way in. And again, the severe threat is starting to dwindle, which is good news to hear. But taking a look at that, we got some storms making their way into Taylor County, uh, Macon County, eventually Crawford County near Roberta, Thomaston engulfed in rain, Monroe County and Baldwin County getting ready to see some rain too. And then moving south where the panhandle of Florida, southeastern Alabama and western Georgia getting their fair share. And then looking northward into the mountains, Atlanta got their fair share of rain this morning as well. And they're on their second round as we speak. So uh, despite the line being to our west, the roadways are wet right now. And and despite the line being where the majority of the rain is, once it crosses over, we're going to see a lot more rain development back behind the system itself. Won't be severe, but it will definitely be one of those days where you want to sit at home, you know, watch some Christmas movies, Home Alone, for example, just one of my favorites at the very least. But we are still under that tornado watch. I think that they will likely expire that at least for us very soon. If not, the latest will be around 9 a.m. or at least until that front makes it past that red line that you see. But we are under a level one of five on today's storm outlook. That means we could see those strong gusty winds. Uh, can't rule out that, that tiny chance for a weak tornado. And like I said, that's starting to dwindle with time. But looking at the future view, you'll see what I'm talking about. We just got the latest model run. So I'm seeing this in real time just as you are. It looks like we're going to see this system making his way in very slowly around 8 a.m. You'll start to see some isolated stuff embedded within, within the squall line itself. This is 10 a.m. So we're already seeing our eastern or western counties seeing some rain, some storms. Then our central counties by 10. And then that'll move on over into our eastern counties as late as 1 p.m. continuing up until 3. And like I said earlier, that's when we'll start to see that residual rain behind the actual line start to develop. And that's going to continue through 5 o'clock through dinner time. And then we'll continue as we move into the evening. Before clearing out, we got a cool blast of air coming in. That'll keep us clear Monday. This is 5 p.m. Monday temperatures in the upper 40s. And then on Tuesday morning, notice it's still very dry outside. I got, you know, a very thin wisp of cloud cover out there. But overall, once this cold front makes its way on in and out, Nothing else to worry about, but the tornado potential, like I've been saying, is dwindling. I think even this model is overdoing it, which is saying a lot because it's not showing much. See that bright green that you see there on the screen? Notice how it dwindles as the system makes its way into our viewing area. So once again, all good news to hear. And then as we look at the wind speeds and gusts, gusts are actually going to pick up after the front passes up to 30 miles per hour in some spots around 6 p.m. It's still in the teens as we head into tomorrow, and then it'll dwindle down after that. But let's look at this cold blast of air coming in again. Temperatures in the 30s as we head into tomorrow morning and as we head over the next seven days, temperature highs are only going to get into the upper 50s. Rain chances potentially as we head into next weekend. Thanks, Jordan. Now